What's up guys, Dave here, uh, it's Al Sharan with Condemn Labs. I'm about to go through my full shoulder training session today. Um, I just had my pre-workout meal. It was eight ounces of ground bison and two cups of jasmine rice. So I took my two pills of humuslin. Always take this with 50 grams of carb or more. It'll help your body digest the carbs, get the sugars out of the blood and into the muscle before you train. So you get those better pumps, you get that stamina, you get that endurance, everything that carbs are good for. Now I'm gonna mix up my intra workout. It's gonna be the lockdown, confined BCAAs, and the C-block car powder. Uh, I do two scoops of the car powder, which will be 50 grams of carbs while I train. Find the scooper in here. I'm gonna do two scoops of the confined BCAA and EAA combo. And we're gonna do one scoop of lockdown. This is our creatine product. This stack works perfect with the pre-workout because like I said before, we took the DNA dispatches. We're going to dilate those blood vessels, make sure we're getting plenty of blood to the muscle for a great pump. That blood is going to be nutrient rich with simple digesting carbohydrates, perfectly broken down branch chain and essential amino acids and a good supply of creatine. So it's going to keep the muscles anabolic during that hard training session. Hitting the shoulders. Um, I do things a little unconventional. I like to start with all my lateral movements first. I feel like that's one of the most neglected body parts. Everybody wants those bolder shoulders, those massive caps, but they don't start with that movement. So we're gonna start with side lateral raises today. We're gonna hit almost the entire gauntlet. We're gonna start with the lightest weights and move up to the heaviest ones we can go and then back down. Burn them completely out before we go into the next movement. So people laugh when I start with these little tens, but it's a good primer movement to get that mind-muscle connection with the lateral delt. You know, you don't often raise your arms at your sides uh, too much throughout the day, so it's not a very common movement. So you wanna make sure that you're getting your brain connected with that part of the muscle to really activate it. You wanna relax the traps and just allow the side lateral delts to bring the dumbbells completely horizontal. Little bend in the elbow. I'm not even counting reps here. I'm just trying to get maximum stimulation until I feel like my shoulders are starting to feel the burn. Again, these aren't a working set. It's just a primer warm up to get the muscle and mind connected. So I was around a 20 something rep range, you know, nothing crazy. Just like I said, getting the blood into the muscle, getting the mind muscle connection before we start going up to the heavier weights. Shoulders are one of those muscles that can take a pounding. Um, they usually fail with stamina before they fail with strength. If you ever watch a boxer, probably the hardest thing they have to do is keep their arms up because their shoulders fatigue so fast. So blasting your shoulders as much volume as you can, in my opinion, is the best way to train them. Not so much with the weight. You want to get that volume in. You want to build that stamina. You want to really make sure that you're hitting them from every angle. Um, front delt, side delt, rear delt. That way you have that round encapsulated shoulder. All right, set number two, again, stepping it up in weight a little bit, nothing drastic. We're gonna go 40 pounds, try to knock out a solid 10 reps. Although you want to get a full range of motion, if you can't and you got partial reps out of it with a heavier weight, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a positive because you're engaging muscle fibers to maximum capacity. You're taking the muscle to failure, even with a partial range of motion. So don't shy away from those. Try them the best you can. Obviously, form is important. Don't hurt yourself, but push it to the max. All right, now we're gonna go a little heavier. When I get to a point where I feel like my form's gonna suffer, I like to do them one arm at a time. So I'm gonna keep one arm stationary, I'm gonna work the right side, then I'm gonna keep the right side stationary and work the left side. Mm -hmm. 
that's a little hack in order to move more weight and still keep your form good. So, that was my last heavy working set. Now we're gonna start with something a little lighter, probably hit the 40s, and we're just gonna drop it all the way down, burn them around. Forty rep drop set. Now I'm done. So now my lateral delts are pretty, pretty smoked, pretty worked. But we're gonna do a little superset to really take it to that next level. We're gonna hit the Icarian lateral raise machine, superseted with wide grip upright rows. Most important thing with this is keep the bar as close to your chest as possible. Raise the elbows as high as you can. Try to take the arm out of it and don't rotate the shoulder. A big mistake people make with this is they get their hands higher than the elbows and they almost rotate the shoulders. You don't want to do that. You're going to put your rotated cuff in a compromised position. So you want to drive the elbow straight up. It kind of doesn't matter where your hands are as long as your elbows are at max height. This, I like to face out because it puts my arms slightly behind me. Get a little bit of a different angle on the machine. Um, facing forward with my arms behind me. end of burning The idea here is to try to take things to failure um, without hurting yourself. So supersets, drop sets, any way to engage the muscle fibers a little longer, keep more time under tension is a plus. It doesn't always have to be the weight, that's important. But extending the set past failure, that'll really get you growth. As you see so far from the way we train with the heavy weight, the drop sets, the supersets, this is why the intra workout is so important. This is what's gonna keep me going throughout the duration of the workout. Um, you know, obviously hydration is one of the most important things, but making sure that hydration is nutrient rich, that's going to keep your body performing optimally the entire workout. Since it's a super set, we're just going to do three sets, this is my last one, try to hit again 10 to 12 reps. So, although shoulders are considered one muscle group, I like to train each head individually and give it its own specific attention. Um, some people might think this is overkill. I say anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Um, because of the intra workout nutrition, the pre workout nutrition, the post workout nutrition we're gonna have, my body can handle all this. So, I really wanna attack each head of my shoulder like its own individual body part. We're gonna finish up with some lateral cross body raises. Just to work on that lower portion, the way the medial delt ties in here on the arm. Give us that little bit of a teardrop look. It's almost a partial range of motion, just to target that lower portion of the delt. I like to lean a little away from the table, so it keeps tension on the delt the whole way. And again, partial range of motion. I'm just going to do two sets like this to finish off the lateral head of the delt and then we'll move into the next step. That's it for the lateral head. Now in order of like priority, which I feel in my weaker body parts, we're gonna hit the rear delts. 
All right, so the reverse pec deck is probably my favorite way to hit rear delts, at least first, um, again, to get that mind muscle connection. Because you have so much going on in the back, your rear delts, obviously your rhomboids, Terry's minor, Terry's major, even your traps, all play a role in retracting the arms backwards. So you need to kind of mentally separate your rear delts from the rest of your maybe stronger body parts. And this is the perfect machine to do that. I want to make sure my arms are almost perfectly parallel to the ground. Um, chest up nice and high. Depress the scapulas, re relax the traps, and just open up. Again, it's a shorter range of motion. You don't need to fly them back like this because you're going to start to engage more of your traps and some of your rear uh, rhomboid. Slight range of motion. Concentrating on the rear delt. A lot of people when they do this they like to push their butt back and lean in this way really rip it backwards you're gonna get so much of the back involved in this that's gonna minimize the effects on the rear delt again this isn't a weight uh, machine that you need to use a lot of weight on just got to concentrate on the form when I train my clients I actually stand behind them and I push on the rear delts so they can mentally connect to where I want them to feel I try to just bring your elbows back and target that little specific move. all right same thing again with this some people keep their elbows down you want your elbows rotated up as high as you can, which is going to bring more attention to the rear delt. It's a small muscle, hard to isolate, so it takes a lot of mental focus. It's another good quality of the convict. It gives you extreme mental focus, helping you isolate those small muscle groups, target them with your mind, and get the body to follow. Obviously, we've been talking about a lot how hard it is to isolate the rear delts. They get a tremendous amount of work when you're doing back, any kind of wide, high rowing movement. Um, so we don't need to do too much with them here. I like to focus more on isolations when I'm hitting shoulders for rear delts because I feel like a lot of the mass and uh, compound movements get taken care of when you hit back. So this is a high reverse fly. It's very similar to the reverse pec deck. Um, that's more lateral, straight across. This is gonna be coming from a little bit different of an angle, pulling on the rear delts from top to bottom. Again, very, very similar, but when you want a well-rounded physique, you wanna to try to train it from as many vantage points and angles as possible. Same if you guys watch the back video, you know how I feel about that. So we're gonna apply those same concepts to shoulders and pretty much every other body part. I keep my arms up towards my face. Chest high with a slight arch in the back, and then open the door. I like to do these both arms at the same time, but obviously, you know, there's variations on these we can do. Some people like to stand like this. You can get one body at a time. The further you rotate yourself away from the cable, the more stress and tension you can put on the lateral delt. You can also do them from the lower portion, bending at the waist, and bringing the arms out to the sides this way. Any of those, or all of them, are great ways to train the rear delts. So now we're gonna start hitting front delts. This is probably the strongest part of everyone's shoulder. It gets so much work when you do chest. Anytime you lift anything all day this way, when your arm's out in front of you, you're gonna hit the front delt. I choose to train them towards the end of my session because to me, they're not a priority. If they're a priority for you, then you put them first. Someone like me who has a dominant front delt, I like to do them last. My, I'm a little bit more fatigued. I don't need to move as much weight and I'll still get a good pump, still get a good muscle crash. So what we're gonna start with, I'm probably gonna warm up with a little bit lighter weight, like the 30s. I'm just gonna go with standard seated dumbbell presses. Chest up high, arms uh, you know, parallel to the ground, dumbbells around your ear height. 
and just wet some straight up. <laughs> Nothing fancy about these, just straight up old school shoulder dumbbell presses. Definitely, in my opinion, the best for putting mass on the shoulders. Um, not that my old ass is trying to do that right now, but I still can't get away from the effectiveness of the movement. I think I had the hardest workouts when I trained for you guys. If not, I'd be slacking right now. Saturday morning, I'd be lucky if I even rolled out of bed. So now that I'm about three quarters of the way through my training session, I want to finish the rest of this, make sure it gets to my system. I can utilize and absorb everything I put in here. Um, and that'll lead into my post-workout nutrition, which we'll talk about, but everybody knows it's going to be two of commissary um, to put those amino acids back in the system. This way, between the pre, the intra, and the post, we have a steady supply of nutrients, amino acids, carbohydrates, everything the body needs to build and repair muscle. It's already in my system, circulating, starting to work. Uh, so when we're done, we'll already be in that anabolic phase. All right, last set, lightweight, 50 pounds. We'll try to burn them out, see what we can get. All right, 20 reps in there. So we're gonna jump into front delt raises. I'm gonna show you a couple variations of these. They all target the shoulder a little differently. Um, what most people like to do is this way, where your palms are facing down. If you notice, with your palms down, you bring a little lateral delt into play. With your elbow down and your thumb up, it primarily focuses on the front delt. Or even some people like to go underhand to really, really emphasize that front delt to our tension. So I like to hit a little bit of all three. My little front delt variation on the 21s. Seven, seven, seven. So obviously if we were looking to go heavy, if maybe this was one of the first exercises we did, I'd be increasing in weight, um, keeping the reps low, and really trying to emphasis a lot of strength and power on the front delt. But since this is towards the end of the workout and I'm just trying to get blood inside the muscle, we're gonna stick with this method and do the front delt raise 21s. Common mistake you see a lot of people make, which if you look closely, I'm not doing as much as I am moving fast, is they let the dumbbells swing past their body and use momentum to get them forward. I try to stop every movement at my hips or right at the sides of them deliberately from a standstill, bring them straight back up again. Super, super important on keeping the tension on the muscle the entire time. No momentum, always initiate with the working muscle, always use that muscle primarily, not momentum. real failure. If I'm failing with 20 pounds, you know I'm done. All right, so now we're gonna jump into shrugs. We started with lateral delts. Obviously that was my weakest body part or weakest part of the shoulder, so I wanted to hit those first. 
Then we jumped into rears again, which I felt needed more priority than fronts. Fronts was the last part of the shoulder that we trained. Now we're gonna jump into traps. Just like with rear delts, traps get a lot of work when you get back um, from all the rows. But this is gonna be an isolation movement on them. Um, we're gonna do two different variations of shrugs. If your gym is lucky enough to have this hammer strand shrug machine, it's essential. If not, you can do some different tricks to get the same results, but nothing replaces this. So we're gonna start with close grip, shrugs to the front. Again, just bringing the scapulas up towards the ears and shrugging. Do any kind of rotating movements again that's going to your shoulders up your uh, rotating cuffs in particular linear motions up and down this is the other variation we're going to do in the superset it's going to be a wider grip hands almost behind me so you're pulling up and back should be completely relaxed, hands are just hooks, and the primary movements are the traps, pulling again literally straight up. Oh. All right guys, that's a wrap. I'm smoked right now. Thank God for all the mutual workout and nutrition. Because honestly, that's the only thing that kept me going through this entire workout. All right, guys, what's up? We just wrapped up the shoulder workout. Um, I took you guys through my pre-workout and intro workout. This is always my post. I do two scoops of commissary post-training, just under 50 grams of protein to make sure I get those amino acids back in my system as soon as possible. Pretty much the entire intro workout stack is soaked up already. This is gonna trickle out a little slower, give me a little bit more sustained amino acid flow into the blood post-workout and still maximize that anabolic window. Let's call those two big scoops. Right, guys that's a wrap um, Dave coach of condemned here at South Shore Iron uh, thank you guys for tuning into the back workout we got plenty of new content coming your way so make sure you check out the Instagram check out the YouTube check out the website for all the stuff we got coming in 2021